Hi girls, welcome to the first presentation on quadratic functions. You will make sure, or you'll need to make sure that you have your textbook, uh, the second edition of Hayes and Harris uh, nearby because the exercises at uh, the end will refer to that and some of the images will be taken from that text because that is your assigned text for this course. This is a screenshot from the syllabus document which I emailed you earlier in the year. It shows you that section 4.3 is a subtopic of the wider topic of functions. We've already gone through basic linear functions and the concept of a function, domain and range, which uh, both of those will be tested in the upcoming assessment. And as much as quadratic functions as we'll get done, but hopefully we will be able to get through the majority of it in this course. So you can see there, main content is the properties of the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and the intercepts. Of course, other related things is how to do that on your graphics display calculator, your GDC, and how to interpret the graph in a practical setting is also uh, very helpful. This is a quick formative assessment. You might want to take a minute, perhaps just pause the presentation here and give this question a go. If you are able to do it, and you might want to check with your uh, your peer if you're doing this in a classroom. If you're at home doing it, perhaps uh, shoot an email off to me or inbox me via Schoology with your answers. And uh, if you are, you know, if I'm if you're online and you're able to uh, get get some quick feedback, you will have an idea whether or not you have mastered quadratic functions and therefore you probably don't need to complete the rest of this uh, particular presentation. You can go on and have a quick go at some of the exercises, select a few of them and check your answers and then move forward to the next section of functions. If however the problem doesn't make any sense to you and it sounds like a complete waffle, you wouldn't know where to start, then this section is really for you. So the objective, objectives in this first lesson, we're going to find out what is a quadratic function what do they look like on a graph? How do you find their intercepts, both x and y axes? And what is the axis of symmetry? So a quadratic function is a relationship between two variables, usually x and y, but sometimes in examination questions they can use different variables. The important thing to remember is that the power of x or the independent variable can't be any greater than 2. So where the power of x is 2, and that's the highest power in the equation, then it's a quadratic function. The form that you're used to seeing is called the general form. It's also known as a parabola. It will be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are the coefficients of the x squared term the x term, which we call the linear term because it has a power of 1, and the constant term. There are some interesting properties that occur when a is positive or negative, and c has an interesting, uh, interesting property itself, which we will discover, you may already know, uh, as, and it actually helps us with one of the intercepts. In function notation, which you also need to be aware of, it looks very similar, we just replace the y with an f of x notation. So, what do they look like? If you recall, back to year 10 mathematics, a quadratic function looks just like a parabola. And that's because it is, they're the same. They can either be concave up or concave down. So basically, I like to call them a smile or a frown, respectively. That means that they have symmetry, so you can fold them on top of one another, or one part on top of the other part of it, usually across a vertical line, and they have a, some sort of turning point where the graph or the shape turns around, just like your smile goes down and then comes back up again. There's a part where it turns around. They're found everywhere. Obviously, that's just a straightforward concave up parabola on a graph. There's a concave down parabola. Here's some parabolas which you probably never realized were parabolas. I bet you see these every day.
Let's go through a few simple concepts now on finding, I guess, different questions that you could get asked in regards to a, um, a parabola or a quadratic function question. The first most basic one is to try and evaluate variables. So how do I find y or the y value when I'm given the x value? The most common error that's made by students is that when they go to square the x value, they forget to put brackets around it in the calculator. That means they end up with a negative number, it's going to be squared and they get a negative answer, which you should remember is not possible. When you square a number, it will always end up being positive. Let's look at a specific example. If x is equal to minus 3, can you find y if you're given this equation? 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 you are going to need to substitute x equals minus 3 into each place that x exists in the equation. Put brackets around every case, it's just good habits, and then you won't have a problem with any powers such as the squaring. Here's the solution. As you can see, minus 3 is in brackets and it's squared, and when it is squared it turns into 9. Minus 3 times 4 will become minus 12, and then you simply if you feel like it, plug it into your calculator or work it out by hand. Most students will rely on the calculator and there's absolutely no problem with that, but you still need to remember that your calculator is only as smart as you are. So if you put in brackets or you forget to put in brackets, the calculator will be exactly the same. So use brackets every time. Here's another little hint. Can you work backwards? So can you find x if they give you y? You're going to need to be able to simplify the equation, make it equal to zero, possibly even factorize it. So there's some other skills of algebra there. And there's a whole other chapter which is actually presumed knowledge for the IB course. If you're having problems with that, you're going to either need to speak to me directly or go back and look up the quadratic algebra topic and perhaps practice some of your factorizing. What are intercepts? Well, as you can see from the diagram, there are two different types. There's the y-intercepts and x-intercepts. The simple rule to find the x-intercepts, you basically let y equal 0. Then you can solve the equation. That's, in a nutshell, just what I was talking about on the previous slide. How do you find the x-values if you're given the y-value? If you can't factorize, you can use your graphical display calculator. And it's actually really, really easy. All you need to do is go to the graph mode, enter in the equation you're given, and select graph. Then, using your function buttons, you can go to G solve and find the intercepts. I'll do a little video to show you and upload it. To find the y intercept, you let x equal 0. That knocks out every term where there's an x in it, which is the x squared and the linear x term, and you're left with the constant, usually at the end. For this equation, y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 5, you can see that if you were to put x equal to 0, the first term, the second term would disappear, and you'd be left with y equals minus 5. Hence, the graph would have to cut the y-axis at minus 5. How to find out if a point x, y is on the parabola? Another common mistake that's students always forget is the actual meaning of an equation. It is a, simply the relationship between x and y. So if you want to know some point x comma y and whether it lies on the function, all you need to do is substitute either one of those variables in, x or y, and check that it works. If when you substitute x in you get a y value that matches the y value on the point, then it works and vice versa. So does the point 2 comma 16 lie on this equation, y equals 3x squared plus 2x? Well, if we were to substitute the x value, because it's probably the easier one to do, we'd get 2 squared, which is 4, times by 3 will give us 12. And then we have to add another 2 times 2. So 12 plus 2 times 2 is 12 plus 4, which is 16. Hence. There's the working, and the y value matches the point. 
2, 16 definitely lies on the parabola 3x squared plus 2x. Now, what is the axis of symmetry? The best thing to do is imagine a line vertically through the center of the parabola. In this course, it will always be vertical, although there are parabolas that occur on their side, but all you need to be concerned about is the vertical line through the center. And if you imagine, if you remember one of those sort of butterfly paintings you might have done in kindergarten or primary school where you'd slop a bit of paint on the page and then you'd actually fold it along a, along a line in the middle and you'd fold it across and tap it down and then when you'd open it up, you'd get some sort of butterfly image where the reflection on the left is identical to what was on the, on the right. And that's why there is a reflection. There's an axis of symmetry to that picture. The same exists for the parabola. You would, if you could, fold a parabola on top of itself across that line of symmetry. Now, the equation for the axis of symmetry follows this notation. x equals minus b on 2a, where b and a are the coefficients of the general form of the equation that we introduced earlier. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That is what the axis of symmetry would look like in a visual form on a concave up parabola. It's also interesting to note that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. We'll talk about more. We'll talk more about the vertex in the, uh, the next presentation. Now I'm going to actually do a few worked examples using a, a, the LiveScribe pen and upload them on this unit after this presentation. And I'll also post some videos from Khan Academy, which are really, really powerful. Make sure you watch all of them. And if you're having any issues, go there first. And I would recommend, I might also write a few notes on that, but I'd recommend you adding me as your coach to Khan Academy when you sign up. All you'll need is a Google account or a Facebook account. And that way I can track and help you and see where you're perhaps going wrong if you're attempting some of the exercises in there and whether or not you've watched the entire video. So I would uh, make that almost a compulsory request that you do that. You might want to jot these down so that uh, you don't lose this list of to-dos before when the video stops.